Hey, Santa! I made you this hot chocolate. <laughs> Why, thank you, little boy. Now, you're sure this is hot chocolate, right? Because hot cocoa isn't technically the same thing. I, 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 um... Santa takes his chocolate terminology very seriously. So I need to know, was this made from cocoa powder or did you actually melt down a chocolate bar? Uh, I don't know. <sighs> Ah, coal, is it? What a coincidence, because this year you're getting cold hard facts about chocolatiering. Enjoy your pamphlet. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that was skeptical that Santa's belly actually shakes like a bowl full of jelly, so we ran the numbers. Stop the lies, Santa. But bellies are definitely on my mind at the moment, my belly in particular. See, the holidays are here, and that means that I'm inundated with candy wherever I turn. Candy canes, peppermint bark, reindeer corn. You guys know reindeer corn, right? Keep running into people who've never heard of this thing. I swear, it's a thing, and it tastes... Uh, well, it, it has a taste. And last, but certainly not least, the holidays are filled with opportunities to consume chocolate. Or, as my dad pat alter ego likes to call them, chocolate-tunities. I mean, just check out this map of every state's favorite Christmas candy. It is chocolate from sea to shining sea. Reese's, M&M's, chocolate Santa's, Hershey's Kisses. Well, there are some that are concerning here, too. I mean, come on, Arkansas Starburst? And Pez? Pez, Louisiana? Really? All right, now that I think about it, the display Spencers could actually make a solid festive choice, so I apologize to you, but no apologies to Starburst Arkansas. And it's hardly as though holiday chocolate consumption is an American thing either. From Chocoladeleta, or Chocolate Letter, the Dutch tradition of giving children their initials in the form of chocolate letters of the alphabet, to Advent calendars, the worldwide Christian tradition of counting the days till Christmas with stale, borderline edible candies, I mean seriously, how long have those things been sitting in there, to Hanukkah Gelt, the tradition of giving foil-wrapped chocolate coins, it is safe to say that the holiday season and chocolate go together like corn and reindeer. Just look at that map, people. Eight states have reindeer corn as their top pick. Eight. Reindeer corn is a thing. I am not making this up. Anyway, with so much chocolate flowing through the holidays, tis, tis the, the season, season for food, food theory. theory to tell you it's all lies. That's right. Much of the so-called chocolate that you're consuming is presenting itself in a fraudulent, very naughty list kind of way. Sure, that candy you're about to eat may look, feel, and taste like chocolate, but that doesn't mean that it is chocolate. Then what the heck is it, you ask? Well, never fear, my friends. Today's episode will explain it all, and we're gonna show you how to spot fake chocolate, or mocklet, as I like to call it, before it gets anywhere close to your festive mouths. Now, before we dive into what chocolate isn't, we first have to establish what it is. Chocolate is derived from the fruit of the cacao tree, which grows in tropical regions near the equator. Now, if you were to bite into one of these puppies fresh off the tree, the experience would not be chocolatey. Heck, wouldn't even be pleasant. There are a number of steps that have to be taken in order to turn cacao into chocolate, including fermentation and roasting. Now, inside the cacao fruit are white cacao beans. Technically, they're the seeds of the fruit, but we call them beans. And inside these so-called beans are what are known as nibs. Roasted nibs are ground and liquefied into chocolate mass, aka chocolate liquor, which, despite the name, is 100% alcohol-free. Chocolate liquor can then be divided into two separate products. Cocoa butter, which is chiefly responsible for giving chocolate its texture, and cocoa solids, which get ground into cocoa powder and give chocolate its distinctive taste and brown color. Therefore, you should expect to find terms like chocolate liquor, cocoa butter, and cocoa powder included on the labels of legitimate chocolate products because, well, that is what chocolate is. However, the mere presence of these ingredients doesn't necessarily make a product chocolate. To earn that label, a product must contain enough of those ingredients. That's why the cacao percentage is often displayed on chocolate bars. This this number indicates how much of your chocolate bar by weight is cocoa butter or cocoa solid. Basically, the higher the cacao percentage, the more chocolate is in your chocolate. The percentage can go all the way up to 100%, as is the case with many baking chocolates. Now, I should quickly mention that this number doesn't necessarily tell you the quality of the chocolate bar. Not all ingredients are created equally, and the chocolate making process can really impact the final product, but the number is the most standardized way of looking at all this. Okay, but how high does the cacao percentage need to be in order to be considered? considered 
and chocolate? Well, that all depends on your jurisdiction. Here in the US, the Food and Drug Administration sets the rules. As an example, in order to earn the label of milk chocolate here in the US, a product has to contain at least 10% chocolate mass, at least 3.39% milk fat, and at least 12% milk solids. Other countries naturally have their own guidelines, and frankly, a lot of them set the bar higher than the US does. For reference, in Britain, the chocolate mass requirement is 20%, double what the FDA requires. Way to set that bar low, America. USA, USA, low bar, low bar. In order to be called white chocolate, the FDA requires the product to have at least 20% cocoa butter, at least 14% total milk solids, and at least 3.5% milk fat. And it cannot consist of more than 55% nutritive carbohydrate sweetener. You'll notice that white chocolate actually has no cocoa powder requirement. The absence of the brown cocoa powder is actually what gives white chocolate its white coloring. Now, as many chocolate purists will tell you, when people talk about chocolate, they're not actually talking about milk chocolate or white chocolate. See, milk and white chocolates, by definition, contain lots of milk and sugar and other non-cocoa ingredients, and therefore tend to have lower cacao percentages and less street cred. I mean, we just got done talking about how, at best, they have like 10 to 20 percent cocoa in there. And when you're talking about 20 percent of the entire recipe, is it still really chocolate? Chocolate purists say no, and the FDA sees it the same way. If a product wishes to label itself as chocolate without using the word milk or white preceding it, it's gonna have to adhere to even stricter guidelines in order to do so. Dark chocolate is an example of a product that has to play by these rules. Now, the FDA's guidelines for labeling a product straight up chocolate are very long and very boring, but essentially it means no to artificial flavors and yes to natural flavors derived from cocoa sources. But as you can probably imagine, there are lots of commercially successful chocolate-like products out there that fall short of the FDA's stringent chocolate guidelines, and cost is the biggest reason why. Genuine cocoa beans can be pretty darn expensive, and companies tend not to like expensive things, so a lot of companies have tweaked their recipes in order to save them money. In doing so, they lose the right to label themselves as chocolate, but in order to hide that inconvenient truth from consumers, companies get creative, if not downright deceptive with their wording. For instance, in 2008, Hershey's Whatchamacallit altered its recipe to use vegetable oil instead of the more expensive cocoa butter, and thereafter could no longer legally claim the candy contained milk chocolate. The wrapper now states that it is, quote, made with chocolate, which is a clever way of phrasing it in a way that's technically not untrue. Whatchamacallit does indeed have some cocoa in it, but the percentage is so low that it can't be a milk chocolate bar, let alone a chocolate chocolate bar. In fact, that same year, Hershey's also altered the recipes of other candies, including Mr. Good Bar, Take 5, and the now extinct Hershey's Kissables, which originally had milk chocolate in the corner of its packaging, but discreetly changed the phrasing to chocolate candy. And by the way, just to be clear, Hershey's didn't change the recipes to all of their candies. Their top sellers, like Hershey's Milk Chocolate Bar, Reese's Candy, Kisses, and Kit Kat didn't get altered at all. But the point is, consumers have to be alert, or else they might get whatchamacallit with deceptive marketing. Words and phrases like chocolatey or chocolate flavored or made with chocolate are usually a good indication that the product doesn't contain enough genuine chocolate to fit the FDA guidelines. Big candy certainly doesn't make it easy for you to tell the real chocolate products from the fakes, which is why today we're gonna play a quick game to help drill the concept home. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you chocolate or mocklet. I'm gonna show you a product and you guess if it's chocolate based on the FDA regulations. First up, this drink. Starbucks's double chocolatey chip creme frappuccino. Chocolate or mocklet? The answer? Mocklet. Starbucks's double chocolatey chip creme frappuccino isn't just named that because it sounds cute. One look at the ingredients in this bad boy will tell you that there is no way Starbucks could legally call this a chocolate product. Next up, snow caps. Chocolate or mocklet? The answer? Chocolate. That's right. Although the word nonpareil might seem a little suspect, that's just the name of the little white sprinkles on these actual chocolate pieces. Cho chocolate pieces, not chocolatey. Ah, even I'm falling into it. Round three, the famous Butterfinger bar. Choc 
Mocklet or Mocklet? The answer here, Mocklet. Now, I gotta hand it to them. They really did what they could by crafting the phrase crispity, crunchity, peanut buttery bar covered in a rich chocolatey coating made with cocoa. Yeah, they used the word chocolatey, but they surrounded it with other cute words ending with Y. So they hit it really well. Plus, they even mentioned the cocoa, but unfortunately, they don't use enough cocoa to use the word chocolate. Butterfingers contain vegetable oil and less than 2% of cocoa. Sorry to lay that figure on your Butterfinger. Now, of course, plenty of popular products are still totally authentic according to the FDA guidelines. Do they taste better than their non-chocolate competitors? Ultimately, it's up for the individual consumer to decide. But for all of this chocolate versus non-chocolate talk, there is an upside here. There is one advantage to using less cacao that we haven't touched on yet, but one that we should probably consider given that it's the holidays and we should be thinking about those in need. For years, the chocolate industry has notoriously employed child labor. About two-thirds of the world's cocoa supply comes from West Africa, where, according to the 2015 U.S. Labor Department report, more than two million children were engaged in dangerous labor in cocoa-growing regions. As a result, the odds are high that a chocolate bar bought in the United States is the product of child labor. Well, most of the world's biggest chocolate companies like Hershey's, Mars, Nestle, and more have signed an agreement to reduce their reliance on child labor, it is still a problem. And it's a good reason that cutting back on genuine chocolate might not be the worst thing in the world. With a little research, it's easy to find which companies have signed the agreement and made positive strides and which haven't. A few notable brands that go the extra mile ethically are Tony's Chocoloni, Seed and Bean, and Ocelot Chocolate, all of which pledge to know where their chocolate is coming from and pay above fair trade prices for cacao beans. So the next time you end up trading some mocklet coins after spinning the dreidel, or you find yourself reaching for a bowl of holiday treats around the Christmas tree, be ready to drop either of those fun facts. Hey, what you're eating is either not chocolate or it could very well be the product of child labor. You're gonna be the hit of every holiday party. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Here's another theory you should subscribe right now. Food theory is coming strong each and every week with content to help and entertain you, the consumer. And if this episode satisfied your sweet tooth, be sure to check out our episode on cake. Turns out it's not just big chocolate that's been lying to you. Big cake has been tricking you about eggs in the cake mixes for years. Go check that one out. Link is on screen right now. And I will see you all next week.